Today is the 23rd of December 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to read scripture together, pray together, explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. If you are joining us for the very first time, let me say thank you and welcome and explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of a mixture of prayer, scripture and music. It's dead simple. It's really easy. Having explained how it all works, we'll start today's leg of walking the way with our opening prayer. So let's pray, shall we? O Emmanuel, God with us, you have touched me. You are God with me. Thank you for these weeks of prayer. In the spirit of the season, my waiting and my patience feel sacred. Refine and purify my heart with the hottest flame of your love. Give me the courage of your prophets and let me do what is right even when others don't understand. Bless my heart with generosity and make me ready to receive you. So come, Lord Jesus, come. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's Bible readings, we continue with the book of Job. And we get deeper into John's revelation. Let's gather together after the music, shall we? Let's ask God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning. Loving God, we read in the scriptures today that even in the midst of trouble and strife that you are with us, that you are ultimately in control. And so speak to us today through these words. Remind us of that, that you are ultimately in control. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the contemporary English version. We begin with Job 16. Job said, 
I've often heard this, and it offers no comfort. So why don't you keep quiet? What's bothering you? If I were in your place, it would be easy to criticize or to give advice. But I would offer hope and comfort instead. If I speak or if I don't, I hurt all the same. My torment continues. God has worn me down and destroyed my family. My shriveled up skin proves that I am his prisoner. God is my hateful enemy glaring at me and attacking with his sharp teeth. Everyone is against me. They sneer and slap my face. And God is the one who handed me over to this merciless mob. Everything was going well until God grabbed my neck and shook me to pieces. God set me up as the target for his arrows. And without showing mercy, he slashed my stomach open, spilling out my insides. God never stops attacking. So in my sorrow, I dress in sackcloth and sit in the dust. My face is red with tears, and dark shadows circle my eyes, though I am not violent, and my prayers are sincere. If I should die, I beg the earth not to cover my cry for justice. Even now, God in heaven is both my witness and my protector. My friends have rejected me, but God is the one I beg to show that I am right, just as a friend should. Because in only a few years I will be dead and gone. My hopes have died, my time is up and the grave is ready. All I can see are angry crowds making fun of me. If you, Lord, don't help, who will pay the price for my release? My friends won't really listen, all because of you. And so you must be the one to prove them wrong. They have condemned me just to benefit themselves, now blind their children. You, God, are the reason I am insulted and spit on. I am almost blind with grief. My body is a mere shadow. People who are truly good would feel so alarmed that they would become angry at my worthless friends. They would do the right thing, and because they did, they would grow stronger. But none of my friends show any sense. My life is drawing to an end. Hope has disappeared. But all my friends can do is offer empty hopes. I could tell the world below to prepare me a bed. Then I would greet the grave as my father's and say to the worms, Hello, mother and sisters. But what kind of hope is that? Will it keep me company in the world of the dead? Bildad from Shua said, How long will you talk? Be sensible, let us speak. Or do you think we are dumb animals? You cut yourself in anger. Will that shake the earth or even move the rocks? The lamps of sinful people are soon snuffed out, leaving their tents dark. Their powerful legs become weak, and they stumble on schemes of their own doing. Before they know it, they are trapped in a net, hidden along the path. Terror strikes and pursues from every side. Starving, they run only to meet disaster, that afterward be eaten alive by death itself. Those sinners are dragged from the safety of their tents to die a gruesome death. Then their tents and possessions are burnt to ashes, and they are left like trees dried up from the roots. They are gone and forgotten, thrown far from the light into a world of darkness, without any children to carry on their name. Everyone from east to west is overwhelmed with horror. Such is the fate of sinners and their families who don't know God. Job said, How long will you torture me with your words? Isn't ten times enough for you to accuse me? Aren't you ashamed? Even if I have sinned, you haven't been harmed. You boast of your goodness, claiming I am suffering because I am guilty. But God is the one at fault for finding fault with me. Though I prayed to be rescued from this torment, no whisper of justice answers me. God has trapped me with a wall of darkness and stripped of respect. God rips me open, uproots my hopes, and attacks with fierce anger as though I were his enemy. His entire army advances, then surrounds my tent. God has turned relatives and friends against me, and I am forgotten. My guests and my servants consider me a stranger. And when I call my servants, they pay no attention. My breath disgusts my wife. 
Everyone in my family turns away. Young children can't stand me, and when I come near they make fun. My best friends and loved ones have turned away from me. I am skin and bones just barely alive. My friends, I beg you for pity, God has made me his target. Hasn't he already done enough? Why do you join the attack? I wish that my words could be written down or chiseled into rock. I know that my Savior lives, and at the end he will stand on this earth. My flesh may be destroyed, yet from this body I will see God. Yes, I will see him for myself, and I long for that moment. My friends, you think up ways to blame and torment me, saying I bought it on myself. But watch out for the judgment when God will punish you. So far. From Nama said, Your words are troubling, but I must speak. You have accused and insulted me, and reason requires a reply. Since the time of creation, everybody has known that sinful people are happy for only a while. Though their pride and power may reach the sky, they will disappear like dust, and those who know them will wonder what happened. They will be forgotten like a dream and vanish from the sight of family and friends. Their children will have to repay what the parents took from the poor. Indeed, the wicked will die, and go to their graves in the prime of life. Sinners love the taste of sin. They relish every bite and swallow it slowly. But their food will turn sour and poison their stomachs. Then God will make them lose the wealth they gobble down. They will die from the fangs of poisonous snakes, and never enjoy rivers flowing with milk and honey. Their hard work will result in nothing gained because they cheated the poor and took their homes. Greedy people want everything and are never satisfied. But when nothing remains for them to grab, they will be nothing. Once they have everything, distress and despair will strike them down, and God will make them swallow his blazing anger. While running from iron spears, they will be killed by arrows of bronze, whose shining tips go straight through their bodies. They will be trapped by terror, and what they treasure most will be lost in the dark. God will send flames to destroy them in their tents and all their property. The heavens and the earth will testify against them, and all their possessions will be dragged off when God becomes angry. This is what God has decided for those who are evil. Revelation 12 Something important appeared in the sky. It was a woman whose clothes were the sun. The moon was under her feet, and a crown made of twelve stars was on her head. She was about to give birth, and she was crying because of the great pain. Something else appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and a crown on each of its ten heads. With its tail it dragged a third of the stars from the sky and threw them down to the earth. Then the dragon turned towards the woman, because it wanted to eat her child as soon as it was born. The woman gave birth to a son, who would rule all the nations with an iron rod. The boy was snatched away. He was taken to God and placed on his throne. The woman ran into the desert for a place that God had prepared for her. There she would be taken care of for 1,260 days. A war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels were fighting against the dragon and its angels. But the dragon lost the battle. It and its angels were forced out of their places in heaven and were thrown down to the earth. Yes, that old snake and his angels were thrown out of heaven. That snake who fools everyone on earth is known as the devil and Satan. Then I heard a voice from heaven shout, Our God has shown his saving power and his kingdom has come. God's own chosen one has shown his authority. Satan accused our people in the presence of God night and day Now he has been thrown out. Our people defeated Satan because of the blood of the Lamb and the message of God. They were willing to give up their lives. The heavens should rejoice, together with everyone who lives there. But pity the earth and the sea, because the devil was thrown down to the earth. He knows his time is short and he is very angry. When the dragon realized that it had been thrown down to the earth, It tried to make trouble for the woman who had given birth to a son. But the woman was given two wings like those of a huge eagle, so that she could fly into the desert. 
There she would escape from the snake and be taken care of for a time, two times and half a time. The snake then spewed out water like a river to sweep the woman away. But the earth helped her and swallowed up the water that had come from the dragon's mouth. This made the dragon terribly angry with the woman, so it started a war against the rest of her children. They are the people who obey God and are faithful to what Jesus did and taught. The dragon stood on the beach beside the sea. I looked and saw a beast coming up from the sea. This one had ten horns and seven heads, and a crown was on each of its ten horns. On each of its heads were names that were an insult to God. The beast that I saw had the body of a leopard, the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion. The dragon handed over its own power and throne and great authority to this beast. One of its heads seemed to have been fatally wounded, but now it was well. Everyone on earth marveled at this beast, and they worshipped the dragon who had given its authority to the beast. They also worshipped the beast and said, No one is like this beast. No one can fight against it. The beast was allowed to brag and claim to be God, and for forty-two months it was allowed to rule. The beast cursed God, and it cursed the name of God. It even cursed the place where God lives, as well as everyone who lives in heaven with God. It was allowed to fight against God's people and defeat them. It was also given authority over the people of every tribe, nation, language and race. The beast was worshipped by everyone whose name wasn't written before the time of creation in the book of the Lamb who was killed. If you have ears, then listen. If you are doomed to be captured, you will be captured. If you are doomed to be killed by a sword, you will be killed by a sword. This means that God's people must learn to endure and be faithful. I now saw another beast. This one came out of the ground. It had two horns like a lamb but spoke like a dragon. It worked for the beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And it used all its authority to force the earth and its people to worship the beast. It worked mighty miracles. And while people watched, it even made fire come down from the sky. This second beast fooled people on earth by working miracles for the first one. Then it talked them into making an idol in the form of the beast that did not die after being wounded by the sword. It was allowed to put breath into the idol so that it could speak. Everyone who refused to worship the idol of the beast was put to death. All people were forced to put a mark on their right hand or forehead, whether they were powerful or weak, rich or poor, free people or slaves. They all had to have this mark or else they could not buy or sell anything. This mark stood for the name of the beast, and for the number of its name. You need wisdom to understand the number of the beast, but if you are smart enough, you can work this out. Its number is 666, and it stands for a person. I looked, and saw the Lamb standing on Mount Zion. With them were 144,000 who had his name, and his father's name written on their foreheads. Then I heard a sound from heaven that was like the roaring flood, or loud thunder, or even the sound of harps. And a new song was being sung in front of God's throne, and in front of the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn that song, except the 144,000 who had been rescued from the earth. All of these are pure virgins, and they followed the Lamb wherever He leads. They have been rescued to be presented to God and the Lamb as the most precious people on the earth. They never tell lies, and they are innocent. I saw another angel. This one was flying across the sky, and had the eternal good news to announce to the people of every race, tribe, language, and nation on earth. The angel shouted, Worship and honor God. The time has come for him to judge everyone. Kneel down before the one who created heaven and earth, the oceans and the streams. The second angel followed and said, the great city of Babylon has fallen. This is the city that made all nations drunk and immoral. Now God is angry and Babylon has fallen. Finally a third angel came and shouted, This is what will happen if you worship the beast, and the idol and have the mark of the beast on your hand or forehead. You will have to drink the wine that God gives to everyone who makes him angry. You will feel his mighty anger, and you will be tortured with fire and burning sulfur, 
while the holy angels and the Lamb look on. If you worship the beast and the idol, and accept the mark of its name, you will be tortured day and night. The smoke from your torture will go up for ever and ever, and you will never be able to rest. God's people must learn to endure. They must also obey His commands and have faith in Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Put this in writing. From now on the Lord will bless everyone who has faith in Him when they die. The Spirit answered, Yes, they will rest from their hard work, and they will be rewarded for what they have done. I looked and saw a bright cloud, and someone who seemed to be the Son of Man was sitting on the cloud. He wore a gold crown on his head and held a sharp sickle in his hand. An angel came out from the temple and shouted, Start cutting with your sickle. Harvest season is here and all crops on earth are ripe. The one on the cloud swung his sickle and harvested the crops. Another angel with a sharp sickle then came out of the temple in heaven. After this, an angel with power over fire came from the altar and shouted to the angel who had the sickle. He said, All grapes on earth are ripe. Harvest them with your sharp sickle. The angel swung his sickle on earth and cut off its grapes. He threw them into a pit where they are trampled on as a sign of God's anger. The pit was outside the city and when the grapes were mashed, blood flowed out. The blood turned into a river that was almost 200 miles long and almost deep enough to cover a horse. Psalm 99 Our Lord, you are King. You rule from your throne above the winged creatures, as people tremble and the earth shakes. You are praised in Zion and you control all nations. Only you are God. And your power alone, so great and fearsome, is worthy of praise. You are our mighty King, a lover of fairness who sees that justice is done everywhere in Israel. Our Lord and our God, we praise you, and kneel down to worship you, the God of holiness. Moses and Aaron were two of your priests. Samuel was also one of those who prayed in your name, and you, our Lord, answered their prayers. You spoke to them from a thick cloud, and they obeyed your laws. Our Lord and our God, you answered their prayers and forgave their sins, but when they did wrong, you punished them. We praise you, Lord God, and we worship you at your sacred mountain. Only you are God. We're going to have our second piece of music, just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And after music, we'll say our prayers for today.
Before we pray, if you would like us to pray with you or for you, then drop us a line through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email. There are links in the show notes. If you click the links, they'll take you to wherever you need to go. We would love to be able to pray with you and for you. But let's pray for today, shall we? Father, as we enter the Christmas season, we want to take time to thank you for sending your son to be born as a baby and to become our Saviour so that He can bring peace into the hearts of those that believe, and joy to find those who find their hope in them. Lord, we know that only in Him is true peace and lasting joy. And as we sing the Christmas carols this Christmas, we pray that true joy would come into our world this season, and that many would find their peace. We ask this in the name of the Saviour born in a stable, Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You've been listening to Walking the Way. All of the details for today's episode can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for any of the prayers and music that we've used. If you would like to partner with Walking the Way, please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And for more information about me or the podcast, head to rayborrett.co.uk or you can find me on Twitter, Facebook and the Instagrams. You can also listen to us on TuneIn, YouTube and Radio.com. My name is Ray. And so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue Walking the Way.